Hello, I'm Kiri and I'm one of the chocolatiers for Hotel Chocolat. Um, I'm known as the cocktail queen because I like making the boozy chocolates. So you probably have seen mojito, lady marmalade, and at Christmas time, mulled wine. So I'm responsible for those. So I work in the kitchen, there's four chocolatiers and we've got a development chef. And we're just constantly coming up with new ideas, tasting ingredients, um, working on new flavours um, and yeah just basically experimenting and everything that we make in the kitchen is made by hand um, and we have a sign-off meeting every Wednesday with Angus who will basically red or green with a card whatever we show him so it can sometimes be a little bit brutal but we're not sensitive we've worked here for far too long. Once it's passed in the sign-off meeting it then gets developed further and it will end up on the shelves in the store. So I became a chocolatier um, basically by studying home economics at uni. I did that degree and I absolutely loved new product development which was a module within it and I applied for jobs afterwards and saw the advertisement for an apprentice chocolatier and I thought oh my god I didn't even know that job existed and I really need to do it. So I applied and I got it and I was basically just trained upon the job like I didn't have any specific chocolate skills I just had a real love and passion for food and yeah I got trained up in say two years um, you learn your craft and all of us have basically come from different um, different areas we've got an art student an art graduate um, we have I can't remember what Emma did <laughs> So ideas for the chocolates literally come from anywhere. So all of us in the kitchen have a little bit of an obsession with food. We will go out for dinner, we'll go to food markets, we'll go to food festivals, we'll go to each other's houses and we'll cook new recipes. Like we, we are a little bit obsessed in that nature, but it's great because it means that we keep up to, you know, we keep on track with new trends and ingredients and flavours. What I love most about working with Hotel Chocolate is the fact that everyone is so passionate about chocolate, obviously. Um, everyone loves the brand and it just, as personally as a chocolatier, it gives you the chance to experiment with, with new flavours, new ideas and just be really, really creative and that is what I love about my job. Typically, my day would consist of eating a lot of chocolate. We, we do actually taste a lot of chocolate, and that's, I'm not just saying that. So if we're making something, I'll be like, Emma, can you try this? Has it got enough lemon in it? Or Tara will be making something, and she'll be like, has it got enough salt in it? So we do taste a lot of each other's recipes, um, which is really important, because if you're quite close to a recipe and you're constantly tasting it, it's good to get someone else's palate. I'd say one of the most difficult parts of my job is when you're developing a recipe and you really hate the flavour of that chocolate. So for example, we had to work on a salted licorice chocolate for Copenhagen and I hate licorice. And that is quite challenging because you've got to make sure that for a licorice lover, it's absolutely, you know, full on licorice. So again, it's really good to, to have other people's opinion on it just to make sure you've got no personal preference that is often quite difficult you need to really get that balance we also like to try experimenting with wacky flavors um, I mean goodness I've been here for 11 years and I've seen quite a few of them so we've done garlic tomato we tried tobacco we did a kale and a peanut one like yeah we have definitely pushed the limits Sometimes it's worked and sometimes it hasn't, but it's always good to try and experiment because you never know. So I'm Emma, I am the Couverturier at Roast and Conch. Uh, I've been here for six years and my job is all about bean to bar. So it's the single origin chocolate that we get from farmers around the world. So we have our own plantation in St. Lucia. We uh, also work with other farmers. So we get great cocoa from Colombia, from Honduras, Ecuador, and that's what's really exciting. All the time, we can find new supplies of cocoa, and I get the great job of turning it into new chocolate. So the cocoa that we've got here is actually from Tanzania. and um, We've just won an award for this at the Academy of Chocolate. We got a bronze award for our 80% dark, 
and it's one of our new recipes that's going to go into our rare and vintage range. So this is all of the single origin chocolate that we produce here at Hotel Chocolat that is uh, straight from the beans that we work with the, uh, that work with the farmers to, to get great cocoa. So the cocoa here, these are the cocoa pods. These grow on the trees out in the countries we get the cocoa from. Uh, and it's a very specific area. It's only around the equator. So these are actually real cocoa pods. They've been cut from the tree and they then get hit with a machete and opened up. And inside is the, the cocoa beans. But they don't look like this at the moment. They're actually purple on the inside and white on the outside. So to make them taste like this, we have to ferment them, dry them, and that's what gives them their amazing flavor. So once they've been dried, they get shipped over here and we turn them into chocolate. So a cocoa bean, if you give it a little squeeze, the shell comes off the outside and we remove the shell and on the inside is the, the cocoa bean. So this is the bit that we're actually interested in. So at the moment it's solid but if we grind it down in a pestle and mortar it releases all of the cocoa butter that's trapped inside of it and that's what turns it into liquid chocolate and makes our recipe of all of our different chocolates. So we then take these cocoa beans without the shell and if we put them into a pestle and mortar, we're going to use the heat that we've put into the pestle and then the action of grinding it down and that turns it from whole cocoa beans, first of all, into nibs. So these have just been smashed down into smaller pieces. And then if you go for a lot longer, this action releases all of the cocoa butter that's trapped inside. But you have to do this for a long time, like within, an, within a half an hour maybe, with the heat and the, the, the pressure of grinding it down, you'll release all of the cocoa butter that's trapped inside and turn that into 100% chocolate, which is really bitter, it's really intense, but that's what we start all of our recipes with, 100% chocolate. So grinding down all of those cocoa beans in the pestle and mortar and we make our 100% chocolate from our single origin cocoa. It's the best cocoa beans and we get to make the, the, the best chocolate out of them.